So there has been a ton of studies on Shailaji and how they, it works in the human body. I don't think anyone fully understands it. It chelates and complexes all monovalent and divalent metals. And so that has to do with uh, monovalent is one covalent bond between two atoms and divalent is two covalent bonds uh, connecting two atoms. And a covalent bond, what is that? Well, that has to do with electronegativity and basically the electrical uh, balance of the molecule. And the simple way to explain it is that Shilajit will chelate excess iron from your body. That's why it's a critical part of my CLF protocol, calcification, lipofuscin, and fibrosis. Because when you have iron overload, it synergizes with omega-3s which you've been eating your whole life, not only in vegetable oil, but in supplement form, algae oil, fish oil, krill oil. And it also works with aluminum and excess estrogen, which the PUFAs increase, polyunsaturated fatty acids. And it makes a substance called lipofuscin, which is like melted plastic in the lysosomes of your cell that prevents autophagy. So in English, what does all that mean? <laughs> it means that if you have excess iron, excess aluminum, excess of different metals, arsenic, then thallium, these actually not only decrease ACP production, but will cause a long-term systemic breakdown of your body through accumulation and complexing with different things. There's a study on fulvic acid being used to uh, prevent and treat Alzheimer's disease because Alzheimer's disease is mucoid uh, beta amyloid plaque and uh, what are called a uh, tau TAU uh, tendrils. And this is similar to a cross-linking kind of phenomenon. And they found that fulvic acid actually detangles or breaks apart those tau particles. Um, which can prevent or, or help with uh, Alzheimer's disease. So neurodegenerative disease, uh, epilepsy, nervous system diseases, uh, diabetes. These are all things that have been studied with Shilajit. Uh, ulcers, there have been studies on ulcers in Shilajit and their benefit there. It's an antioxidant with a higher ORAC value than uh, blueberries or acai or any of that stuff. So it's a natural antioxidant. And to me, the, the two major aspects of Shilajit that are the most important is that number one, it's a mineral source. So you're getting all of those carbon bonded minerals with fulvic acid. And then two, it's a mineral balancer. So those are two different things. One, you're getting a ton of minerals that under stress, they're used up to generate enzymes or if uh, certain pathways are overactive and your body's trying to rebalance, you're gonna burn up certain minerals. We know that with magnesium and calcium, uh, the more calcification you have or iron overload you have, the more magnesium you're burned through. It's called the magnesium burn rate. Uh, same thing with copper. Uh, the more uh, iron overload you have, the less copper you have. Uh, with polyunsaturated fatty acids, the more your fat stores, your adipose, is made of PUFAs, these unsaturated toxic fats, then the less vitamin E you have. And so there's always this interrelationship, this seesaw effect. And what's really cool about Shilaji is that to me, it doesn't take a prescription. You don't need to go to a doctor and say, you know, is this right for me? To me, it's right for every human being on planet Earth. Why? Because we're all on this planet. We're all on this globe called planet Earth and we're all under acid rain. We're all with NPK fertilizer um, with the biogeochemical cycles being off. We're all in the same boat. And so we all need the same solution. And really that comes down to clean air, clean water, clean food. We're a ways off from that. We know that even people that are supposedly doing it right, growing food, a lot of them aren't filtering the water or they aren't filtering it properly and they're still pouring acid rain or chloramine or fluoride or tap water or hard water onto their plants. And I could safely say it's 90 plus percent of farming in the world right now. And 
even less so that is not exposed to the atmosphere, AKA greenhouse grown with filtered water and with the proper conditions. And so a lifetime of consuming nitrogen, phosphate, potassium, fertilizer foods, which bloats the plants and makes the plants unbalanced, makes them soak up water and really harms us because the plants will uptake minerals to survive, whether they like it or not. If they have the choice between death or surviving, a plant's gonna choose surviving by soaking up inorganic minerals or non-carbon bonded minerals. And we ingest those and it's ingesting rocks. It's ingesting these microscopic rocks, whether it be in your celery juice, your, your salad, or your hard water, your unfiltered water, your spring water, your well water, or big ones. And if you've ever seen elderly people, you'll see age spots all over their forehead on their forearms. These are uh, liver spots, but that's not really what they are. They're PUFA spots, they're lipofuscin spots. That's the name for them. And these people, I mean, if they're living in, you know, out in the woods, they're living out of the city, why are you guys breaking down? Well, it's because you're drinking water from your well that's going through two really dinky sediment filters and you've been consuming vegetable oil your whole life. You're going out to eat, they're cooking your food in what? Canola oil. You get canola oil, PUFA, omega-3, plus iron, plus ultraviolet light, plus mineral deficiency, copper deficiency, magnesium deficiency, and that's a total body breakdown. And so, it's obvious that uh, there's a mass exodus right now happening off the planet and people are just dropping like flies. And whether it's by design or not, I believe it is. It's a fact that younger people are getting cancer, they're getting diabetes, it's ridiculous. And everyone's arguing about the cause. Guys, how about people are consuming rocks, hard water, any water over 100 parts per million, I don't care if it's spring water and glass, full of calcium, you're ingesting rocks. So what breaks down the rocks? Fulvic acid, because that's how it works in the soil. That's what the microbes make in the soil. That's the whole process of how a plant uptakes minerals. The fulvic acid allows a negatively charged carbon, a carbanion, to attach to a metallic, a positively charged metal, and it makes a battery that's an organic mineral. We don't have that anymore. And you've most likely never consumed those your entire life. Mm -hmm.